The number of heat waves that happen every year has tripled compared to last century. They're also lasting longer with higher maximum temperatures than ever before. Not only that, it can take up to two weeks for the human body to get fully acclimated to hotter temperatures, so sudden heat waves can cause even more damage on top of the already rising global temperatures in the background. I have faith in our scientists, but while they figure out how to save the planet from climate change, people like you and me need to stay cool in the meantime. While the majority of people with heat-related illnesses are elderly, inner-city residents, especially those without air conditioning, conditioning or fans, everyone's at risk of having complications of hyperthermia or abnormally high body temperatures. Hyperthermia can progress to heat stroke, a medical emergency which often shows up as fainting, confusion, or abnormal behavior but can lead to multi-organ failure if left untreated. I'm Zane, a board certified primary care doctor, and in this video we'll talk about five major risk factors for heat stroke, which can be fatal but is also easily preventable. Knowing the risk factors and how to prepare for heat stroke can help keep people safe and healthy but Check this out. Fans don't always work and we'll talk about why later. Oh, and stay tuned till the end where we talk about the group that has the highest risk of heat stroke and chances are you or someone you know are in that category. If you suspect that you or someone else is having heat stroke or another heat related emergency, call 911 or get medical care right away and start cooling the body down. The first risk factor for heat stroke and other heat related illnesses is doing outdoor activities. Engaging in physical activities outdoors can do great things for the brain, the heart, and overall health, but it does raise the risk of heat related illnesses in two ways, through hotter environmental temperatures and internal body temperatures from muscle use. In addition to monitoring temperatures and just not exercising when it's hot, consider scheduling scheduling frequent breaks from the heat. People should monitor and limit how much they exert themselves and rest periodically during activity. People who show early signs of heat-related illness should not engage in any physical activity and consider seeing a healthcare provider right away. It takes up to two weeks to get acclimated to hotter temperatures, so this is one of the reasons why sudden heat waves can be so dangerous. Even athletes with top cardiovascular fitness should consider taking at least a few days to get used to hotter temperatures and consider consulting with a coach or doctor before exerting themselves in the heat. And no matter the time of the year, it's all always wise to dress for the weather. People can protect themselves from the sun by wearing lightweight, light-colored, loose-fitting clothing. Some people find natural fabrics such as cotton or linen more breathable. It's important to remove clothing that interferes with sweat evaporation like synthetic fabrics and consider wearing a hat or an umbrella for added sun protection. The second risk factor for heat stroke and other heat-related illnesses is going outside in periods of extreme heat and humidity. Implementing all the best practices for preventing heat stroke and other illnesses aren't enough sometimes and it's best to just avoid times of extreme heat and humidity and stay in air-conditioned areas if possible. Checking your favorite weather app or a website like the National Weather Service at weather.gov can tell you the heat index which incorporates both the heat and humidity. Pay attention to the heat index and consider scheduling outdoor activities for cooler times of the day. Oftentimes, this is before 10 a.m. and after 6 p.m. It's a good idea to limit physical activity when it's hot outside, but sometimes it's necessary to avoid even going outside at all, regardless of the level of exertion. People might even consider taking frequent cool showers. If going outdoors is necessary, take frequent breaks and avoid dehydration. In regards to transportation, try and avoid the sun by walking through shaded areas, avoid standing outside in the heat while waiting for a bus or Uber, and if traveling in your own car, don't stay in the car or leave a child in the car when it's hot outside. Even if you open the windows, the intense heat can be extremely dangerous. People who live in a place without air conditioning are also at risk of heat-related illnesses, and this includes a lot of people across the world and here in the United States. Too. So people who don't have AC should try to limit the use of the oven, block the sun by closing the shades, blinds, and curtains during the hottest part of the day, and also consider keeping the windows open at night if it's safe and seasonal allergies aren't an issue. If it's feasible, people without good ways to stay cool at home should try to spend the middle of the day in air-conditioned places like a shopping mall, the movies, a library or senior center, or a friend's house. The AC is best because fans don't always work to cool you down, and here's why. The main way the body cools down is by transferring heat from the skin to the air. It relies on a temperature gradient with cooler ambient air absorbing the heat from the skin. But if the air is already too hot and humid, it doesn't have the capacity to take additional heat away from the body. And as the ambient temperature and humidity increases, transfer from the body to the air becomes less efficient. So because of this, fans don't always work in high temperatures and 
humidity because there's no temperature gradient to carry away the body's heat. Not only that, the highest risk of heat injury is in hot and humid weather. In heat exhaustion, water and sodium become depleted in the body, which then compromises its ability to stay cool by sweating, raising the body temperature further and increasing the risk of becoming an emergency like heat stroke. So staying hydrated enough is crucial to staying healthy in the heat. In fact, it may not be a bad idea to always carry a water bottle regardless of where you're going. Consider drinking water or other fluids every 15 to 20 minutes if you're out on a hot day, even if you don't feel thirsty. A simple way to tell if you're drinking enough water is if your urine is clear. Dark colored urine is a sign of dehydration. Some sports drinks can help replenish the salt lost through sweating and fruit and vegetable juices are probably okay too. But stay away from drinks containing alcohol or caffeine like coffee, tea, or soda because they can make you more sensitive to the heat. If your doctor has told you to limit your liquids, ask what you should do when it's very hot. Toddlers and preschool children can't regulate their body temperatures well and need additional water when the weather is hot, so consider regularly scheduling water breaks and encouraging all children to drink during active play even if they don't feel thirsty. Another risk factor for heat-related illnesses is having pre-existing medical conditions. Mental health conditions like depression and anxiety and impairments in memory or cognition can get in the way of someone's ability to appropriately respond to weather conditions like extreme heat. Physical conditions can make people's bodies more sensitive to heat. Things like heart, lung, and kidney disease, illnesses that cause general weakness, being overweight or underweight, or requiring a special diet can make people more sensitive to heat. Some medicines, including those used to manage blood pressure, heart disease, infections, and mental health illnesses can make it harder for the body to cool itself off. For example, medications such as diuretics or water pills, sedatives, and certain heart and blood pressure drugs can make people sweat less. In fact, here's a list that includes some of the groups of medicines that could make people more sensitive to heat. But taking a lot of different medications, even if they're not on this list, is also a risk factor for heat-related complications. If you're on prescription medications or have a chronic disease or mental health illness, ask your doctor if any of your medications make you more likely to become over Overheated. It is important, however, to continue to take all prescribed medications and discuss possible problems with the doctor. Non-prescription and illegal drugs like cocaine and amphetamines along with alcohol can also make the body more sensitive to heat. So what do you do? If you take medications, have a medical condition, or are prone to heat-related illnesses, then here are some questions you can ask your doctor. Things like, what are the warning signs of heat exhaustion and how can I prevent it from worsening? What are heat cramps and who can get them? What should I do if my legs swell? What should I do if I'm taking medicine that makes me more sensitive to heat? How much water should I drink when it's hot outside? What should I do if I work in a hot environment? The last risk factor for heat-related illnesses is older age. Age plays a major role in heat regulation and people 50 or older are actually the most sensitive to heat. Not only are older adults more likely to have illnesses and take medications that make them more sensitive to heat, but as we age, our skin doesn't circulate blood as effectively. Sweat glands also become less efficient and older adults sometimes don't even sweat as much in the heat. These age-related biological changes that hurt the body's ability to cool off effectively increase the risk of heat-related illnesses even further. Research has shown that sitting in front of a fan increased older adults body temperatures in extreme heat because they weren't sufficiently sweating. So older adults may need to use other ways such as going to an air conditioned place to cool off. Even older people who have regular contact with home health agencies still are at an increased risk. So it's important to check in on older family members, neighbors, and friends and enlist the help of social workers too. In a heat wave, offer to help them go somewhere cool such as air conditioned malls, libraries, or senior centers. There are groups like area agencies on aging that can provide resources like transportation. During hot weather, think about making daily visits to older relatives and neighbors. Remind them to drink lots of water or juice as long as their doctor hasn't recommended otherwise because of pre-existing conditions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay cool everyone. If you haven't already, check out my video on the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke and what to do if you suspect them. And here's another video you might like. Peace and see you in the next one.